Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode we begin by extending the solar panels on our Gilly mission. Thank you to Brian Cox for reminding me. Yeah, that would have been bad. So yes, after this we will try to launch missions to Jewel for the first time and that should be good. But yeah, I think uh, we're all set here finally. Good times. And so Bill will be properly safe. All right, on to the Jewel missions. Okay, so this will be our first mission. It's a Jewel Orbital Sciencer, and I've unlocked Scanner Tech, so we've got one of these survey scanners on here, so we will hunt for ore in the Jewel system. That seems like a good thing to do. And otherwise, we've got these antennae, two of them. Uh, so hopefully that'll be enough range. They're as much range as we've got right now. They are not relay antennae. We're going to send another relay uh, a satellite mission. We're gonna have one of these dishes, maybe two of these dishes. Uh, I don't know. Fitting two of these dishes on something and fitting it into a fairing is tough, so maybe just one. Um, I need to check whether that's enough range at DSN level 3. 61.2 million kilometers. We'll check in the tracking station. We'll get this launched first. This should have enough range. If it doesn't, we're going to be in trouble anyway. Um, but yeah, it's got thermometer, barometer, and uh, Geiger counter on it. And um, backup solar panels. It's got a backup propulsion system just in case the spark fails. We've got ant engines. So because it's got to be a long trip. And so we've got two sets of solar panels as well. And I think it's pretty well situated. Now here we're having the first use of a cheetah engine and I'm going bare with that because I didn't like that particular uh, thing but yeah it's looking pretty good and it'll finish our orbit and then get us over to Jewel. That's the plan there and I decided to use it because it's a pretty good deal. Um, it's 850. The Terrier is 390. It's basically taking the place of a Terrier. It's like two Terriers in my mind, but it has better ISP. So I decided to go with it. It's uh, two Terriers in mass. It's got more than two Terriers in thrust. It's a little bit more than two Terriers in cost, but the ISP is beneficial. So yeah, and it saves us from using two separate stages. Now here, uh, somebody had told me to do this with the Bobcat engine before, so this isn't my idea. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I like this arrangement. That The fact that you can... Uh, having just the Bobcat engine with uh, this thing around it is pretty useless. Um, the skipper is better than that. But uh, of course it's more expensive too. But if you can put two of these on, then... The Bobcat engine gives you 800 kilonewtons of thrust compared to the Skipper 650. And uh, its vacuum ISP is not so good. And we have to remember vacuum ISP is what you want to look at because um, you get to vacuum ISP pretty quickly. And uh, another option was like clustering skiff engines. Uh, but this was a cheaper option basically because the cluster of skiff engines would be pretty expensive. And so yeah, uh, this gave us the thrust we needed. And then I needed a little bit more thrust actually, so I added thud engines. And I've decided to gimbal lock these core engines. I might regret that. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know why. I guess each engine has its own gimbal. That's interesting. Each nozzle, I should say. Technically, they're modeled after the LR87, which is considered one engine unit, even though it's uh, even though it's sort of like two completely separate engines. But yeah. Uh, one engine unit and then the thud engines are the ones that do the gimbling and the maneuvering hopefully that'll be enough if it flips out uh, that means that it wasn't enough <laughs> okay so uh, we'll, we'll send this out as soon as we get the dual transfer window but let me build the other things first so the other things will be a, a lander of some sort not to land on Tylo that's a little bit too harsh but our lathe that's different altogether well, I mean, you can't do biome hopping on Leif very easily, but we could land something on it. Maybe I'll make a multi pro We'll see. I want to launch all of them on the same launcher, and this launcher can send three tons over to Jewel, so that's pretty good. And uh, if I can get a complex lander mission on board, then that's fine. But I just want to do three launches. This, the relay satellite, and the landers. So we'll see what I come up with, and we'll start launching at the window. 
Hmm. Looking at the altitude of the jewel, I don't think our antennae are gonna be enough. That's 69 million kilometers right there. That's a lot, and if uh, Kerbin is on the opposite side of the sun from it, that totals out to be 82 million. So, hmm, maybe we need to take a look at the tech tree. Now, with two antennae, hopefully it'll be fine, but the relay dish does not seem to be enough. So, we got this relay antenna, which is much bigger and more powerful. It makes sense that we need the most powerful thing in order to make it work. You know, this Commutron 88 might be even better than this. I mean, well, it's a little bit heavier. I think two of these we find. They're each 61.2. I don't know if it's additive per se, but hopefully it's additive enough. I've got not quite enough science to unlock this technology, though. I mean, we've got plenty of extra science to do that I've left lying around, of course. So for the dual relay satellites, I wanted to have two of these like this. But doesn't seem to quite have the range. This was a sort of nifty stack. I don't actually know how the interstage nodes on this really work. I just tried my best and hope that this will work out. Hmm. This is like too nice to not launch. <laughs> uh, I don't want to rebuild this. That other relay antenna also seems to be pretty darn huge. Well, I'm gonna try these out anyway. I think the lander's gonna be a little bit complicated because it's gonna have its own pair of Commutron HG55s then, I guess. It would need them. Hmm. That's a pretty heavy lander. Okay, so here we are with the science mission first. SAS on, throttle is up, and we'll see if it works. And... launch. I really would like my windows though. Gotta be careful with only the thuds controlling the orientation. Altogether, the three missions cost about 100,000. So, it's not too bad. And if it turns out that things go wrong like communication, we will fix it for next time. Well, next opportunity they won't have arrived yet, so it might be a little bit of time before we figure out what would be best to send next to Jewel. It's a pretty simple, elegant little rocket. And with that engine shut down, we'll just coast a bit uh, to our apoapsis and then uh, finalize with the upper stage. We should have more than enough delta V. And now that flames are gone, I'll just separate. Okay, maybe a little puff here. And the fairings can come off too. Ooh, that's not very de good decoupling on those. That's one of the reasons I don't like using the stock clamshell fairings. Now it flips? <laughs> okay. Well, before I forget, let me, I think Action Group 2, yeah, everything extends with Action Group 2, and so now we're all set. Well, except for the scanner. We'll keep that tucked in for now. So I know that at Jewel you get like 125th the amount of power that you do at Kerbin. Um, that's the same way with Jupiter, after all. So the question is whether this is enough solo panelry. I didn't really check on that. With the new way that science transmission works with Kerbalism, though, uh, I'm just not entirely sure. It used to be that it took a lot of power in order to transmit science. Now, it just does it on its own time. So power seems to be less of a concern. At least that's my impression. Anyway, as you can see, we've got 3,000 meters per second to transfer to Joule, and then once we get to Joule, this thing has 3,000 meters per second to get into orbit around various planets to scan them, I mean moons to scan them for ore, and then transfer to other moons. So we should have some good mileage with this. Okay, let me plot for Joule. Okay, with MechJeb's help, I got a transfer that only cost 1,924, with a possible lathe encounter, and that can be finagled into helping us get into orbit around Joule. Hmm, this may have more energy consumption than I thought. I think the antennae are really... Yeah, I think they have a lot more energy consumption than I thought. <laughs> okay, well, that's gotta be a problem. I might need to put more solar panelry on the other missions. 
The engine does generate electric charge, but that's not going to help if we can't control the vessel. The energy requirements for antennae in realism overhaul I think are less than in stock. Well, we're coming in a little bit off here. We can probably just correct that once we get there. Let's see. We've got a thousand meters per second in this stage still. Yeah. That'll be the most convenient thing to do rather than a big course adjustment. Don't know about that lathe encounter anymore. I think that might be a little bit too much but we'll see when we get there okay so this is 60 meters per second our drain rate is 0.48 and it's a little bit tough to let's see what's our recharge rate it seems to be 1.5 kilowatts per panel and there are four of them so that's six kilowatts mm, that's a bit tight I think that I think that only gives us 12 times what we need. If we turned off one of the antennae, it'd be okay, but I don't know if that has enough range. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with this for now, and I'm gonna revisit my other probes to add some more solar panel stuff. We don't have RTGs yet. Oh, by the way, I named the launcher the Porg. And I was actually looking for something related to Bobcat or Cheetah, you know, something cat-like. But then I so happened to have Twitter on, on another screen and there was an image of a Porg. So I went, okay, well, it's wildlife anyway. <laughs> so, so Porg it was, so that's why it's called a Porg. Okay, this is one of those times where I sort of wish I had tweak scale instead, but just to make sure that we get enough power even if one solar panel fails, I figure we need we need 10 per second basically. We've got 6 per second on the mission we sent out and just to feed the antennae we need 10 per second. So I think, uh, I mean we could go with the high quality thing, that's a significant extra cost. But I think two of these Gigantors will do the trick. Uh, each one provides 24.4 per second, so it's like uh, four times, 4.8 times what we actually need. Um, it's expensive, but uh, I'll just launch this one again with the new solar panels, and we'll see if it can help with everything. Um, you know, it occurs to me that Okay, maybe these have enough power, uh, you know, range to transmit back home. As long as we have some small relay, then they should be able to talk to the other missions in the dual system, right? Right, I mean, it, the relay antenna does not have to be sufficient range to reach back home, does it? Or does it? <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess we'll, since this is going to be a very heavyweight mission anyway, we might as well toss them on and see. Mm, where is a good question. This is getting pretty packed. I guess... Um, hmm. Well, why don't we just use commutatrons? Within the dual system, that should be enough. Uh, well, commutatrons aren't relays. Darn it. That is really our only option for a small relay antenna. So, when these go out... Yeah, it's just a matter of physically trying to fit things without everything bumping into each other. Okay, so that could go out like that, but then when this folds down, does that... Uh, it's a bit clippy. I don't like that, but I think I might take it. Okay, so that might be an interesting antenna possibility. We'll see. If that works, we could potentially close the one of the antennae on the other one and still make use of it. SAS on and ignition. I think the lander's gonna be a bit a bit of a problem as far as the power is concerned. 
it's gonna be tough to fit enough solar panels on that. The well, I'll have to check on the power requirements on the relay satellites. But they don't actually have enough range, potentially. These numbers. I feel like I need to unlock some better technology, especially as far as the antennae are concerned. The, the one with the better antennae would probably be a good idea. But we're just shy of enough science, and this is what I wanted to do today. I wanted to launch missions to Jewel, so that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, stage is out, and we are coasting. Once the flames go out, we'll separate. Okay, good enough. Separation. And no, 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 we don't need you to do too much right now. Uh, let's wait on the clamshells. They almost collided with the thing last time. Okay, now clamshell. Uh, yeah, the way they separate, I don't like. <laughs> what can I say? Oh, that's the science, no. Oh, we haven't done the pressure scan in the upper atmosphere? Okay. I forgot I have the auxiliary solar panels here too. I guess that's all right, they have enough space. Well, this is pretty serious. Pretty serious looking probe right here. Okay, that's a sufficient orbit, and we should be able to transfer just fine, judging from the previous probe. Okay, here we go with our second mission to Jewel. Somewhat identical to the first, but... You know, there are two ways of having backups in case of failures. One is to have redundant systems on the same mission. The other is to have redundant missions. Okay, we are right on time as far as the burn's concerned. That's pretty good, we won't need much of a correction here. Oh, okay, well, uh, sure, why not? Tylo encounter. Tylo can get us into orbit, potentially. We'll just have a little maneuver there, and that should do the trick. And we will set that alarm. Orbital Sciencer, well, we'll probably know which one is which, maybe. Okay. This should definitely have enough power. It's got a drain of 0.68. I, that's, oh, that's because we added the extra relay antennae. Those don't need to be out right now, but let's just see. Um, well, I mean, with the huge panels, it's definitely enough, so. All right, this is on its way. Now for the other missions. Okay, rocket looks the same, but we have a different payload. And in this case, I decided to add two extra solar panels to each of the relay satellites, so they now have six. And it seems like that should be enough, assuming that the power is 25 times less at Joule than at Kerbin. Um, it, I think they can weather one solar panel failure, but not more than that. But uh, there is a possibility that we'll just keep the... I mean, pr probably we're going to be keeping the two satellites on this upper stage all the way to Joule. In that case, the communication isn't going to be a problem because there'll be two antennae, and so there should be some sort of additive effect of that. It's a matter of whether we ought to separate them once we get to Joule, that's the problem. And power-wise, again, they'll have double the number of solar panels, just in case they're facing the wrong direction, so I think it'll be alright at least up to Joule, and then it'll sort of depend on what we do at Joule, whether they're going to continue being functional or not. But here we go, launch. Just notice, do we not have volumetric clouds in this uh, visual compilation? Are they just 2D layers or? Hmm. I want my volumetric clouds. Oh, we're going too far up, shucks. All right, separation. Yeah, 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 too far up. And fairing set. So sloppy. I, I'll just go with the confetti fairings. Okay, there we go. We have orbit and time to plot for Joule again. Okay, it's really dark out. Ambient light is not doing much. We can see the horizon back there, but not in front. Let's get going, though. I'm a little bit late there. And we are on our way to Joule. 
Well, Kerbalism is not like test flight. Uh, if it was test flight, I'd be holding my breath when I throttled up that engine to see if it would work or not. <laughs> so, there is that. Uh, probably, I could eventually sneak in some other realism-ish mods. Well, engine failure, engine failure mods, I don't know if I really need that in my life. I'll think about that. But, we're getting to the point where maybe I'm okay with Kerbalism and we can add some more complexity to things. Barris is an option. Again, I, I have to be concerned about exactly how other mods will react to Kerbalism, right? Because Kerbalism is so encompassing. I don't even know if the USI part mods are... I mean, I know USI Life Support should not be used with Kerbalism, obviously, but the USI part mods where they have Kerbalism compatibility... I mean, Kerbalism uses food, water, and oxygen as well, so... And, um... Whatchamacallit, uh, USI has tag life support configurations for that sort of thing. I don't know how it interacts with Kerbalism. But certainly as we get along with things, it would be nice to have larger modules and more stuff to build space stations out of. I could build space stations with stock parts, and I think I will build more complex stations. We should get to that. But it would also be nice to have the USI parts, which uh, make for some nice stations. I don't know, I think USI is updated for 1.6, I haven't actually checked. Okay, it looks a lot more like the first mission than the second as far as our approach. Tough to really say anything since it's not telling me how much Delta V I have left right now, in this stage. But I would be surprised if we don't have 60 or so. There's a Val encounter, we haven't seen one of those. Okay, we'll go with that for now. Why not? Diversify a bit. Okay, yeah, I mean, there's definitely more than 60 in there, so worthwhile to keep it along. And again, we want these missions stuck together for the time being. The problem is the antenna I don't have a real top node, so... Well, it's recharging for now. Obviously, we would probably want the... I should have staggered the solar panels, darn it. We would probably want its antenna facing the sun or tail facing the sun to get the optimal thing. All right, so yep, well, this is all set. We'll do that maneuver and we'll be at least passing by Val. So alarm, add, and finally the lander mission. Okay, we've taken enough time that it's dark out now. We've basically launched everything in the same day though. SAS on, throttle is up, and once again, I have to bring my windows out. Honestly. Okay, and this is the lander mission, and I didn't take any chances. I put the Gigantor arrays on it. I managed to fit them on with a little cubic octagonal strut, so here we go. And it's also got uh, dual antennae. It's a little bit heavy as a result, but it's got the backup propulsion as well has got a spark and six ant engines which should be more than enough to do a decent landing on uh, any moon but Tylo. Tylo it cannot do. And Lathe I would prefer to use something else for. I'll have to think about that. Maybe I should send a little parachute mission into Lathe. The downside to all this is uh, judging from my EVE experience there's no point carrying Goo or Science Junior so I'm not. Uh, we're just carrying the very basic instruments. Seems like uh, we are going to have to send Kerbals in order to do Goo and Science Juniors properly. And, you know, that makes sense. Well, I think the Porg rocket has done pretty well for us today. I think we'll see more of it. It's a pretty simple rocket, obviously. But, you know, three tons to Joule is nothing to sleep, sneeze at, and we can still put boosters around it to help out. We could make a Porg Extended, a longer first stage with SRBs on the side. Also, we can make a 2.5 meter version of the Cheetah stage. Alright, that's good enough. Separation. And these troublesome fairings. <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah, maybe stock KSP is just meant for confetti. Maybe I can tune the separation force up a little bit in the VAB. I haven't checked. Well, uh, let's wait until we get into space and then deploy everything. This does have the seismic accelerometer, so, I mean, of course, as a lander, that makes sense. So we can do that finally. We haven't really done that yet, ever. That's a relatively new instrument for us. Yeah, making sure the Gigantors didn't collide with anything on this tiny lander was a little bit difficult. But I managed it. It's clear. They're clear of everything. The antenna placement is also a little bit weird for the same reason. Okay, that's a good enough orbit. And plenty of Delta V left over for the transfer, even though this is heavier than our other payloads. So, good times. Alright, basically the same thing as before. Here we go. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on. Need a little bit more, of course. And this one looks a little bit better than the last one. Uh, we had a little encounter with Tylo. Maybe we should just go with that. Uh, or maybe we should go with something a little bit closer in, I don't know. We already have a Tylo one, not that we have science on that particular one. There's so many options. I mean, we have so much Delta V to work with. Uh, let's just leave this be like this and create a dummy maneuver there. And alarm. So, four missions to Jewel. And I think this will probably be a short episode because it was just launches and, you know, a little bit of explanation, but none of the usual drama. But as we get this into daylight, I think I'll wrap it up here. This is what I set out to do was launch my Jewel missions. And next time, I don't know about Drez. I'm not a big fan of Drez. I, I, it's, it is a sort of neglected planet of the system and I feel bad about that and all but still I will take a look at our contracts and see if it's worth sending something to Drez. At least with Jewel there was a lot of science possibility and of course uh, now that we've unlocked the scanner uh, possibility to scan for ore but I'm looking more forward to the Duna window and in general, I'll, I think next time I'll let the contracts dictate what I want to do. We might have to set up our stations again, though interestingly in all this time, while sending the EVE missions out to EVE, we haven't had any warnings about our stations. So that's curious. But anyway, we'll look into what we need to do next time. This, this episode was a dual mission episode and it was relatively successful. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.